And I'm, I'm going to talk to you about, about leadership and about strategy. And a, a lot of the stuff that I've, um, that I've learned about that obviously comes from the work that I've done in, in politics and in government. But I think you'll see that there are parallels in sport and the whole kind of way that sport prepares and teamwork and teamship and handling pressure and a lot of this thing, the, the, the things that I talk about, I think can be applied to sport. Some of them I've learned from sport and also hopefully some of them will apply to business and to, to what you guys do. Anywhere you go in the world, you, you, you sort of realize that there's this kind of culture of negativity around the place. It's really, really difficult to deal with. And so, I, you know, I get to the airport this morning, I look at the British papers, it's all bad news. I, I get on the plane, I get the Irish Times, the Independent, it's all bad news. And that kind of sense of that negativity is very, very difficult. But that's the environment that we're, that we're all in. Uh, I mean, somebody just stopped me as I was coming in. Where's the guy with the funny rugby shirt? There. And you were telling me about, you know, the whole sort of, the, 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 this kind of thing about the, the way that we, we're just surrounded by this kind of media negativity the whole, the whole time. And I work with lots of organisations who say, you know our biggest problem? The press never gives us any credit for anything. We don't get a fair press. We don't actually get, get, you know, people don't actually present us in the way that we are. To which I always say, well, look, you know, join the club. It's just kind of the way it is. Now, we can all fight to change it. I do my bit and, you know, we can all do it, try and do our bit. But actually, there's not much that you can do. So you just kind of got to take that as a given. I think you can make the case that the pace of change today and through our generation, as it were, has been faster than any period in, than in, in, in human history. I mean, you know, we're not having the kind of the massive world wars that have <laughs> defined the last century, say. And, but, you know, in terms of technological change, scientific change, people's longevity, and the this, this sort of difference between our life and the way that we lead our life, and just 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago is absolutely phenomenal. If I think about journalism where I started out, journalism today is a completely different thing to what journalism was when I started. I started on a paper 30 years ago called the Tavistock Times. If you talked about the media then, you basically meant a daily paper, and you meant the news. Used to used to be an event. The news now is around us all the time. More magazines, more papers, the internet, 24/7 news. It's around us all the time. So that sense of the pace of change. I saw something the other day. I read in the Financial Times. Apple, right? Which, if you read Steve Jobs' book, not that long ago was on the verge of bankruptcy. Apple now has a market, a capital market valuation bigger than the top seven car companies in the world combined. That is unbelievable. And that is because probably all of us and billions of other people around the world now have some sort of product that they have given to us and become this kind of huge giant. So that's changed the way that we live, changed the way we do business, changed the way we communicate, changed the way that we talk to each other. It's a completely different world. So as that, <coughs> that sort of these currents of change are going on, change can be very exciting, it can be very liberating, it can be exhilarating, but it can also be very scary. People do get scared by change. The whole power, I won't get too political here, but the power of conservatism as a political force is because it plays to people's instincts to try to keep things the same. Hang on to what you've got. Don't take risks. Don't try to do difficult things that are going to change the shape of the future. The best team leaders are the best team players. And the, the thing about teams these days, you can't always pick your own team. Um, right, you, what's, the, what's the biggest event coming up at the weekend in world politics? Probably the French presidential elections. Okay? Whoever wins, he is part of Barack Obama's team. He's part of David Cameron's team. He's part of Angela Merkel's team. Now, David Cameron, he'll be slightly worried because a few weeks ago, it looked like Nicolas Sarkozy was going to be winning again. And David Cameron and Merkel, they kind of slightly stuck their necks out. And they kind of made it clear that they rather hoped that he did win. Well, by, by this is the first round, in two weeks' time, it could be they're both going to have a bit of fence mending to do. Because the French president, whether we like it or not, he is a member of the team of every single member of the European Union. So teamwork isn't just about you're a coach and you pick the team. Often, your team, if I was suddenly say to you now, let's do something kind of, let's break up into groups, right? And your team A and your team B and your team C, they're your teammates, you've got to get on with them.
you're going to work with them.